Hello YouTube, Dustin here, Average Guy Hi-Fi. I've actually got a pretty um, cool little video here for you. Um, this is a little bit different than the normal videos, speaker testing and all those type of things, but I popped into Best Buy earlier today to go get some speaker stands um, for some Pioneer Andrew Jones speakers that I'm gonna be reviewing for you guys um, in the near future. So that's one of the upcoming sets. I've got a definitive technology, um, one of their little uh, satellite uh, 5.1s with the subwoofer and everything. So I'll be reviewing that as well too. But anyway, popped in there to buy um, buy those speaker stands and they just didn't have any that I wanted. So I'll probably just end up ordering those on Amazon. Um, but basically I went over to the open box section of Best Buy, which I've definitely been known to frequent. And they had a uh, amplifier that I've really been considering. Um, it was in the open box section. This is a, a $1,200 amplifier. They had it listed at $800. Um, they actually worked with me a little bit on that price too. So you can get, you can kind of negotiate sometimes on those open box deals as well too. So it ended up being um, $800 out the door sales tax. And then also it came with a three year warranty. So I was actually really pleased with that. And my thought to buy this was it's going to improve the quality of the channel for the speakers I'm testing. So then that way we can, um, give it all these speakers a real fighting chance, especially if they're a little bit more power hungry and everything. So um, this amplifier here should do a good job driving most of the gear that I'm gonna end up buying and reviewing on these channels. Because again, I'm more towards the beginner market. Um, if I get a good deal on the higher end stuff, I'm definitely gonna jump on it. But um, this amplifier is the MM7055 five channel power amplifier. Uh, it's rated at 140 watts um, at eight ohms. Uh, 170 watts at six ohms and surprisingly enough it's not rated at four ohms and i didn't know that um, until i got it home and i started doing a little bit more research so i'm not quite sure how i feel about that but i did read the review from audioholics gene over there is fantastic by the way you guys should definitely subscribe to his channel if you like this type of content but he calls it out too in his review of it he said that um it wasn't rated at four ohms, not on the box, not in the paperwork, any of that stuff. But Marantz apparently says that it drives four ohm speakers just fine. So not quite sure how I feel about that. Um, so I'll get it in the rack and kind of test it out and everything. But I've owned amplifier, just to give you a little backstory in my amplifier journey. I've owned probably 20 amplifiers, power amplifiers over the years. Outlaw Audio, Emativa, um, Parasound, Rotel, um, Adcom, um, basically a whole bunch of different kind of higher end amplifiers too. I've got some, I had some that were really expensive, you know, $4,000, $5,000 amplifiers that I got killer deals on the used market. So um, I have a lot of experience with amplifiers. This room is so small over there. And again, that's just a part of this, <laughs> this channel too, is kind of helping people with a little bit more small rooms where you can get really good sound. Um, so this amplifier is probably, probably not needed. So what I'll do is I'll put it in place. I'll kind of put it put it through its paces, um, see if I notice a difference, um, and then maybe decide if it stays or goes. At that price, I can probably get my money back out of it, no problem. So I wasn't too concerned, just decided to pull the trigger and jump on it. I had some Best Buy gift cards laying around that had just been gathering dust somehow. So I was able to knock a big chunk of this purchase out of the way. But anyway, out the door price of $800, the three year warranty, I was quite pleased with that. You know, that's roughly what accessories for less sells them for um, with the warranty and everything too, but it's kind of nice to be able to support local stores also, especially my Best Buy. They're really good at in there. Um, they know their stuff about the gear. I like picking their brains, um, you know, trying to figure out what they kind of like and all that type of stuff. So it's nice to be able to go to a store and I feel like that's slowly coming to an end. So anytime I could support a brick and mortar store, even if they're not making a ton of money on the, on the purchase, I like to try to do that. So anyway, full disclosure, I've already taken this amplifier out. It had some kind of broken styrofoam. So it was really awkward in the first video that I shot of this. So, and it made a ton of noise in this little microphone that I got. So I just decided to take the styrofoam off. Um, and then I'll kind of just put it up here on the on this little spinning platform. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this amplifier in my rack system over there, and I'm going to run um, Denon Odyssey through three Martin Logan Fresco I speakers that I, I grabbed. Um, and then I'm going to not use the Denon amps and use the amps inside this. And I'll show you guys how the Denon Odyssey set the speakers up using the Denon amplifiers and then using the uh, Marantz amplifiers. So that's kind of the plan anyway. And then that way I'll have some nice quality um, power going to all the speakers that I would be reviewing. So give them all a fair chance. So that's kind of the plan here. So kind of a fun little day. I always like getting new audio gear, um, but here we go. I'm just gonna set it on the ground and I'll put it back up here. Obviously, I mean, this weighs definitely more than like the receiver. Um, than my 3300 Denon receiver, but it's first 
first when I took it out of the box, I noticed it doesn't weigh nearly as much as my Imativa um, XPA5 or my Proceed um, five channel amplifier that I had. Those were like tipping the scales at, I think, seven, 70 pounds, somewhere around there. This is probably more in the line of about 40 pounds or so. Um, but anyway, this one comes with the um, speaker terminals, obviously. Let's reconnect the speakers there. It comes with the um, balanced inputs, which are these guys right here. Um, which is nice. It's like a higher quality cable, a little bit, um, if you're running long lines, they kind of recommend going that route. Plus I think pure um, enthusiasts prefer those, those connections anyway. I'm just going to be hooking it up kind of the, the way that I've always hooked up my amplifiers is just through the RCAs. It also has a trigger on the back and then it has a remote control out and in. So those are kind of what's on the back panel there. Um, I'm not going to use a trigger. Basically, I always leave my amplifiers on. The more I read, um, into this stuff. Uh, a lot of the manufacturers actually recommend leaving just the power on. I've got a really nice surge protector, so I'm not concerned about anything happening while it's just sitting there idle. Um, but whatever it is, just the, I'm going to also get a fan to put on the, uh, the top of it as well, just to kind of keep it cool. So those are kind of the next steps. Anyway, so this part of the video is done. I'm going to pop over there, get this thing all hooked up. Pretty excited about that. And then again, I'll run those uh, Martin Logan, Logan Fresca eyes through um, the Denon amplifiers, and then I'll use the Marantz amplifiers, and then I'll show you guys how it set the speakers. So that's the plan. Stay tuned, because that's uh, coming up next in the rest of this video here. All right, everyone, I kind of got the, um, the amplifier sitting in place over there. Again, I'm going to run the uh, Denon Odyssey setup here um, off of the Denon receiver using the internal Denon amp amplifiers um, in the receiver there. I'm going to run this calibration set. This is the third step of the process here. So I just fast forwarded through the other two steps because it kind of get a get a little long if I do that way. So again, this is the Denon receiver. Um, these are Martin Logan Fresco I speakers. Um, super inquest, um, impressed with the quality of these speakers and everything. I picked these up um, last week and um, I've just really been enjoying them. So I'll be doing a review of these uh, down the road. But anyway, here we go. This is the third step of Denon Odyssey setup using the internal Denon amplifiers. And then we'll fast forward to the um, Marantz. I'll run the um, Denon Odyssey setup with these same three speakers using the Marantz um, amplifiers and see if there's any um, setting differences or how it set the speakers, see what the difference is. I've always wanted to try this, so here we go. <laughs> All right, so I'll click over to complete. Um, do I want to turn on the dynamic EQ? I'm going to say no. Uh, turn on the dynamic volume. I'm going to say no. It's going to apply the uh, room corrections here. And then I'll go through and read off of how everything was set with the Denon amps. And then again, we'll switch over to the, the Marantz um, dedicated amplifier to see if there was any differences in how, how um, Odyssey set everything up. Click next. Okay, so again, Odyssey Multi um, EQ XT32 is on. Odyssey Dynamic EQ is off. Odyssey Dynamic Volume is off. I'm going to click over to Details. It's saying that I have a the, it set the front speakers to large. It set the center speaker to small, and then I'm not running any um, surround speakers right now. It set the front left to 6.9 feet, the front right to 7 feet, the center to 7.1 feet, which is very accurate. It set the front left to negative 5.5 dB, set the front right to negative 6 dB, set the center to negative 7 dB. Um, it set the crossovers to full band for the fronts, and it set the center to 80 hertz. Okay, so there's that one, and then stay tuned. Now I'm going to do the fun part. I'm going to hook up my brand new um, amplifier over there, and then I'm going to do the same calibration um, next, and then we'll see the differences. 
All right, everyone, I just got done um, kind of pulling that system out and getting it all hooked up correctly. So again, the purpose of this video is to show you what the Denon Odyssey um, set the speakers up as um, using the internal amplifiers on the Denon. Um, that was the previous Odyssey um, calibration video that will be before this one. And then this right here is the Denon. Um, no amplifiers are being used on the Denon. I'm using RCAs over to connect the unbalanced inputs on the Marantz receiver, and then I ran all the speaker wires from the Denon over to the Marantz, since now the Marantz amplifier will be handling um, powering all the speakers here. So again, this is the third portion of Denon's Odyssey setup here. So I'll go ahead and run through this, and then I'll scroll through the menus here and show you guys um, how the Denon Odyssey set up the um, all the settings and everything with the uh, Denon receiver, and then versus amplifiers, and then using the actual Marantz amplifier. So here we go. All right, I was just running these uh, Martin Logan Fresco eyes, just three speakers, so we can kind of speed the video up a little bit for you guys here. So I'll click over to complete. Um, it's going to ask if I want to turn on the dynamic EQ. I'm going to say no on that. It's going to ask if I want to turn on the dynamic volume. I'm going to say no to that as well. Um, the Denon will go through here and apply all the room corrections to these speakers uh, now that it's using the amplifier instead. And then I'll go through these and I'll read off of how everything, um, how the Denon set up the speakers uh, with the new amplifier basically connected here. So it's kind of wrapping up its uh, room corrections here. And again, I'll be reviewing these Martin Logan Fresco eyes. Um, I might keep these as surround duties. I've been super impressed with these things so far. Um, so that's, that's on the horizon there. And I also have a definitive technology um, set that I want to review and then the Pioneer, Pioneer Andrew Jones speakers too. So I got some pretty cool videos coming up here. All right, I'll just click over to next here. Click over to details. Again, it said Odyssey Multi EQ XT32 on, Odyssey Dynamic EQ off, Odyssey Dynamic Volume off. Click on details. It set the front to large, it set the center to small, and right now I'm not running a subwoofer or uh, surrounds to help speed the process up. It set the front left to 6.8 feet, the front right to 7 feet, the center to 7.1 feet, which is almost identical to what, the, um, what it set it bef at before. It set the levels of the front left to negative 5.5, it set the front right to negative 5.5, it set the center to negative 6 dB. It set the front to full band, it set the center to 80 hertz. And that's it. So we'll have to kind of go through and compare. I'll put all this information in the description there as well with all the list of the gear used and all that stuff. And then again, keep an eye up uh, for these next videos, guys, because it's going to be some, some more home theater speakers, which I know is what you guys want me to start reviewing. So again, my name is Dustin, Average Guy Hi-Fi here. Uh, please subscribe to my channel, and then hopefully we can help uh, grow this thing. I'm going to be buying more used speakers, uploading videos, giving you guys my average Hi-Fi score. Um, so stay tuned if you're into this type of stuff.